Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. It's the start of the second week of October, and we're going through colonies. Thank goodness it's finally cooled down. I mean, goodness. We love to break records here in Tennessee. We're all about breaking records because last year we're breaking rainfall records. This year we're beating late uh, heat records. You know, September was like our hottest month this year. I mean, it's just crazy. And there are some of you guys up north who are shoveling snow, so... I, I don't know who's got it worse. You guys probably think you have it worse. Maybe you do. I, I kind of like cooler weather myself. I love fall, and thankfully we're getting some. So what we're going to do today is get into this double deep colony. For those of you who were subscribers um, around February, March, we were getting into this colony, and we were doing an inspection. They did really good for us. Not only did we make another double deep colony off of them this year, but they also produced a very large crop of honey. Um, this what we did we took the old queen and we, we stuck her in a different colony and then we replaced her later and this colony right here was given a queen cell and and they've been doing great they drew most of these frames up here they drew at least eight frames this year so on top of the honey supers that they filled and all that stuff so we're going to get into there see what we need to do because we are getting really close to winter time bees are going to be slowing down we've got to get feed on now and we're going through colonies and just making sure they have what they need. We didn't have a very good fall flow this year. Some of the big colonies have plenty, and some of the little colonies don't. And there's several that are in between, but we need to go through those colonies and make sure that they have enough. And we're going to kind of show you what that is in this inspection. Hopefully the bees will be really nice. It's starting to cool down now. It's in the low 80s today. So we've got our frame feeder over here. Some people ask me why I do doubles. I have singles, I have doubles, I have some, uh, I have three, four, five, six, seven triples, no, eight triples in this yard. And they just have tons of honey. We're gonna be pulling some of the extra honey that they don't need off. You know what, let's go to the bottom box first. We're also gonna be throwing some patty on there. That's got some good weight to it. We'll probably still give them some feed, but that's not too far off from where we need to be. It needs to be a little bit heavier than that. So right now, there's a pretty good bit of bees in this hive, and I'm really happy about that. All right, we're seeing, I'm seeing cat honey here, cat honey here, cat honey here, a little bit of cat honey up top over there. We're not going to get over here. There's not a lot of bees. Um, they're primarily over in these six frames and in the top box, I noticed, so we're just going to jump right over into this frame here. A lot of bee glue everywhere. We did have a really good bee glue year, of course. We always have that kind of year. The bees have really slowed down on their brood rearing, like a lot. So this is just dry comb. There's a little bit of nectar slash honey over here. We'll just set this out. I imagine that most of the brood is going to be up top or over in the center of this. But the bees have really slowed down on their brood rearing, and that's in part due to the low amount of pollen and just the time of the year. Bees just don't want to brood this time of the year. All right, nothing over there. Looks like there might be a little brood over here. All right, so I'm I'm seeing a bunch of eggs in this frame. Um, you know, there's a pretty good bit of eggs. It's not a really solid pattern. There's some eggs over here too. So that, that's good. The thing of it is right now, this is what I think about, is that bees are not naturally going to brood a lot this time of the year. It's, it's natural for them to lower their population of bees. That's just what they do. They do it in relation to the forage that's going on and just, uh, you know, just how much they have available to them. But also this time of the year, um, as we're going in towards winter, after the winter solstice, if you, if you start feeding them, they will take it and they'll start brooding really heavily. But right now, it's just it's very hard to keep them brooding at a high uh, brood amount. And that's fine. We don't really need them to because they're going to burn through a lot of resources. But one thing I, I do think about is I want the bees to have a good, strong winter cluster. Now, there, there we go. We got some brood over here. I'm not seeing any honey up in here. So there's a drone right there. We got you know pretty good bit of calf brood over here for that time of the this time of the year that's as good as you're gonna see decent bit of calf brood over here and the next frame over looks like it has calf brood you know so 
my thoughts are if I put a patty in between these two boxes, put it right here, even if I just stimulate the bees to, to, to be just a little bit stronger, one to two frames more of a cluster going through winter, that's a big deal coming out of winter because that means they're going to be able to heat a bigger area and that's going to be able to help the queen get that population up earlier and much, much quicker, which is not only just going to help us have honey, but it's also going to help us with other things as well. There is a lot of brood down in here. It's milky. There's, there, yeah, there's a good bit of brood in here. That's nice. This, uh, probably can't see it with the lighting here. I, I seriously doubt the lighting's not very good. But anyways. Yeah, this frame has got a lot of good brood in it. And the next frame over has a little bit. All right, now we need to check on stores. So obviously we have a queen in here. Make sure we put all this back. Whoops. That one bee that's on my thumb is a little suspicious. Yeah, for me. All right. So we need to now address the feed situation. I'm going to throw some patty on there. And by the way, I got a little update on that. I've just been really pleased with it. And I know a lot of you all don't have access to Pro Suite near you. I did not for like 15 years of beekeeping. It was right after Man Lake took over. Uh, Walter T. Kelly, Kelly's Bees, and that became available to me. So I have to drive up there to get it. But I showed you in that other video how to make your own syrup. I also want to a answer a question or two on that. A lot of people are like, well, you're not supposed to boil stuff because it'll create stuff that's bad for the bees, HMFs and other things. If you notice in the video how light that syrup was, we simmer it. We don't boil it. It takes, And that's why it takes so long to cook off that moisture. And I don't, I'm not a pro at making that stuff. That's a recipe that came from somebody else that we've used a few times and to make patties with. And as long as you do it long in the right way, you end up with a high quality syrup that's going to do the job. And it, it, I've never had any problems with it. Um, I, I just don't think it's a big deal. And this is the kind of patties that you can make off of it. This bucket right here has not had a lid on it for four days. It's been in the back of my beat up Subaru and it was made six days before that so this is day 10 and just look how soft and moist that is it hasn't had a lid on it for four days and you know the, the sides where there's a little bit of powder are a little dry but really not that much and it's just a you know, really moist down in here and that's very, very different from the other recipe. The other recipe is great because if you don't have access to syrup or don't want to make the, the stuff yourself, then it's, it's very cheap and affordable. But the, uh, the problem with that is, is it just doesn't stay moist like this does. I mean, I'll throw a big patty on this thing and come back and, you know, if they haven't eaten it in five days, it's still moist. And uh, I think that's just a great attribute for any patty. So let's throw some of this on here. Oh, the other thing is I don't have to use um, parchment paper to keep it from drying out. And because it's the right consistency, it's not going to drip down in there and damage any um, brood or the queen or just anything. So I'm just going to squish that out a little bit like that. Now we're going to smoke everything out of the way a little bit. Get this other one up here. Now it is really sticky. You probably want to wear gloves or something. Ugh. We're going to put a little bit of feed onto this high sugar syrup. It's actually pro sweet is what we're using, but if you're feeding sugar syrup, use two to one this time of the year because the bees aren't going to have a lot of warm days left, especially if you're further north. It might already be too late for that. But for us, it's, it's 80 degrees today. It'll be at least that tomorrow. So let's see how they're good on foodstuffs over here. Let's go ahead and just take this feeder out. I got some floats in there as well. Alright, so this frame right here has little to nothing in it. And I would really like it to be full. Yeah, it's not even that drawn. So... I smell a little bit of a goldenrod left over or something. Man, that bee glue. And once it cools down, it gets even harder. So this isn't even fully drawn either. But that's got honey in it. This frame next to it has got a lot of honey in it. So this, this colony needs some feed. 
I really want on a colony like this, and you know, we don't have that hard of winters, but I would really like a full box of honey on a colony like this. That's a good frame of honey, and we haven't fed sugar syrup to this colony since we were in the dearth in summer. So all this up here is pretty much natural goldenrod and whatnot, and, and that's great, but we're gonna go ahead and give them some of this as well. We don't take any honey during the fall for multiple reasons. I really like the bees overwintering on the real stuff, and uh, you know, it's less work for me to do. So um, it's a win-win all the way around, I think. Our customers, most of them don't really care for the dark fall honey whenever I have harvested it. That's a good frame of honey right there. That's what we want to see. The next frame looks the same. What we're probably going to do is just fill that feeder all the way up one gallon of that syrup. And that's what's so nice about cooking down your own or buying this stuff is that what I put in is what I get back out. You know, if you make your own uh, thinner, you know, sugar water type feeds, it's more honey, then once they take that water out of there, you lose that mass where a gallon of Pro Sweet is almost 12 pounds. So if I put a gallon in here, that's going to add 12 pounds to the colony. And uh, we'll probably come back again a week later and just see how they're doing. And we still have enough time that we could add a little bit more weight. All right, now this frame, and it's got a little bit in it. Oh, there's some of our pollen patty that the bees love. So let's just check over here. I'm just curious to see if they have any brood up in here at all. Whew, that bee glue. I'm so glad it's cooled down though. I love fall. It's one of my favorite seasons. I'm not really a summer person. Yeah, that's just solid honey on that next frame over. Yeah, this is just solid honey right here. So the queen's just down there. She's laying up a couple frames. Hopefully that pollen patty will stimulate her to make another frame or so. Remember, a really good full frame of brood is going to cover about two and a half odd frames, you know, a loose cluster, not, not a tight cluster, but just like bees just covering a frame like in summer weather. That's going to cover about two and a half to three frames. So if we can get an, just one extra frame of bees laid by the queen because we feed her that pollen sub, it's going to help them have a nice big cluster, which is going to be good in a lot of different ways, especially, I would imagine, in colder areas, you know, that would be more valuable. Here we can get away with a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. All right, so basically we're just going to pop yeah, those floats down in there because sometimes they propolize those down. And we're going to pour a gallon of Pro Sweet into here. So that's really all there is to it. Now you're going to have to watch robbing when you do this. Pro Sweet doesn't seem to attract robbing quite as bad. It has no scent. Um, I don't put essential oils in my feet either, so that doesn't attract any type of robbing. But we're, we have been putting reduced entrances on all of our colonies, so that helps the bees defend themselves from anything this time of the year. Um, every hive is just trying to get whatever they can from one another. The yellow jackets are going at it with, each, uh, with the hives, with each other, everything. Is. So it's a rough time of the year, and that is why we just do everything that we can in every season, summer, early fall. You'll see us getting into hives in winter months and stuff that you didn't think that you uh, were supposed to do, we're going to be doing that kind of stuff because we find that a lot of times you can bend the rules a little bit. And we don't, we don't do anything that, to hurt our bees, but that's one of the things that we're going to be doing is uh, taking care of our bees in winter. Now, we're also going to be testing out some insulative inner cover type stuff. I've never really done a whole lot with that. I think after studying it a lot more, I think there's some... Uh, fine attributes that maybe even us southern beekeepers could benefit from. Not because we have to have it. I've been overwintering colonies for years without any insulation, but the more I look into it, the more I think that it could have some attributes that would help our bees overwinter better and maybe not burn through so much of their feed. So we're going to test that out a little bit this year and maybe have a couple products that we're going to use to insulate the colony. So we got some stuff coming up. We've been a little bit busy lately. We're going to be at that conference um, this weekend. Hope to see some of you there. I'm going to be speaking November 3rd, which is my birthday. So don't forget this, bringing me balloons and all that kind of stuff. Red's my favorite collar. And uh, 
please do not bring me, bring me balloons. <laughs> uh, I'm 31. I'm turning 31. I don't need balloons. Uh, maybe I should start acting like it. Anyways, we are going to have information on that. Um, it'll be in Columbia, Tennessee. And hope to get to meet some of you guys. And good luck overwintering. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below.